Hey, good afternoon everybody. This is John from Volkswagen Planet coming to you from a nice 78 degree day here in Tampa, Florida. It's getting a little hot. I'm getting a little cranky because I'm a little tired. Extreme, in extreme pain right now because I uh, pulled out the starter of the 1968 auto stick. And let me tell you why I uh, had to pull that out. So most of us that are drive the non-auto stick models our starters look like this and you could be asking yourself why are you showing me this well that leads to today's video so I have the what I thought was the um, hard start or hard uh, relay uh, start problem on my 1972 Super Beetle so I went down to AutoZone last night got the four prong relay I guess you could call this the yeah it's a relay it's got the 85 86 87 and 30 uh, poles respectively so I went to go install this but first I watched a couple videos and I happened to come across a good friend of mine uh, Glenn at Duckman Cycles and VW Garage happened to do a video on this exact same topic so Glenn, I want to say thanks for this video or thanks for the tip for you making your video and this is why I'm making my video now. So I went to go install this and it says that if this doesn't correct the problem um, or if the car makes a clunking noise, it could be a worn out bushing. So here's the problem and or here's my concern about this. Um, I have not installed the uh, relay yet. Because when I turn the ignition, I hear the clicking noise on the idle plunger and I hear a clunk as if um, as if the motor was locked up type of noise. I can spin the motor, motor spins freely, it's great. So that would tell me that the according to your video and according to videos out there that it's not a voltage problem in this situation, in this uh scenario you recommend that it was the starter bushing i know me and you've talked about this a couple of times on text going back and forth and um, i've also read a couple others videos that the you know the starter bushing could be bad well when you buy a starter you get your starter bushing comes on a little tag like so so i did not replace the starter bushing on the starter I just put in and it goes on the end of the shaft like this now this is a tight pretty tight fit now my question and concern is um, if this is if, if the tolerances are that, are that close that I, mean, I can understand this thing jumping around and stuff like that but when you put this bushing in there it makes it um, a lot it, it supports the shaft I understand that part but the, the question or the concern I have is when you put the shaft in, you said that it could be a, uh, your, the um, bushing needs to be replaced. Well, how do you know, or anybody out there, how do you know if this bushing does need to be replaced? So let me show you where this bushing is on the transmission itself. So the bushing rides right there where the uh well that's where the the uh shaft would go and you can see the bushing sitting right in there now this is not the transmission that i uh have in the car this is just strictly for um uh what's it called just for to show uh where this bushing's at so my question is is okay if you got to replace that bushing uh how how do how do you even get this bushing out of there I, it looks like it's pressed in there, but um, now, can you keep that bushing there if you go to an auto stick transmission? So let me show you what the auto stick auto stick starter, I'm sorry, looks like. All right, so we're back where we originally started from. This is the, the uh, starter out of my 1968 auto stick, and we can tell by the ends that they are different. And so my question is, is if you use the auto stick starter in the transmission, 
do you still need to knock out this bushing? I'm thinking no, but um, please comment below if I'm right or wrong, or if you ever had to do this this uh, type of work or this scenario, because I I'm at um I'm lost. I would I would say that we don't have to, given how the uh, shaft is on the end of the starter itself right there because this right here would go inside the case so comment below um, like I said this this is the auto stick starter it does have a, a little bit higher voltage um, but I don't think that's really the scenario or the the case right now or the problem right now the problem is is or what everybody tends to think is this situation right here now and the question is, is do I need to knock out this bushing out of the corner of the uh, starter or the uh, transmission, the, the housing there? So again, automatic transmission or automatic starter. It's got a shorter, uh, I guess you could say shaft. I guess this is the, the appendix where it comes out and fires against the, fire, the uh, flywheel and... Um, that's it guys like I said I'm I'm really lost for words I don't think it's the hard start relay because I am getting voltage to the starter and it's making the clunking noise the motor is not froze up this is the third starter I've gone through so the starter did check out fine so again guys comment below I know I've like repeated myself four and five times uh, on this situation but um, I'm just flustered I want to do it right if I have to run the um, automatic starter, auto, auto stick starter, then I will. But also, guys, this is a, uh, a heads up to you. If you ever have your, your motor out, your engine out, and uh, you, you have access to your transmission, go ahead and buy the 39 cent bushing. Uh, it'll save yourself a great deal of problems and headaches in the future if this is the problem. Uh, I don't see any way to take it out of that housing except for pulling the transmission out of the car. But then you're talking about dropping the motor and all that blah, 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 blah. When if we can just simply put the starter in there, that would solve a lot of the problems. So again, guys, comment below if you come across this or if you think by just putting the auto start, auto stick starter in the car, then uh, let me know. And if you guys have done this, is there any differences? Uh, do I need to wire it up on the, um, does it need to be wired up on the solenoid anything different? Or does it get power any different? I'm not seeing, I'm thinking they're all the same. Just the uh, the ends are, are a little bit different because of the flywheel and the flex plate. And uh, that's about it guys. So like, comment, share, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, leave a comment. I really appreciate a comment on this on this topic. But uh, we'll catch you on the next video, and um, I'm not going to go on any more, um, veer off this topic until this problem is solved. So like I said, I probably won't do another video until Wednesday. That'll give me time to take care of this. So I appreciate your support. Um, I haven't, didn't really get much done today, so I'm going to stay focused on this. Thanks again, guys. Stay warm, stay safe, God bless, and we'll catch you on the next video.